abduction. It's the ultimate close encounter. There have been thousands of reported cases all over the world, but these claims are almost invariably dismissed by authorities with little or no investigation. When you deal with abductions, there's not a whole lot of evidence to support other than that testimony, and that's it. But there have been people that have come forward with x-rays or physical evidence of something under the skin that defies explanation. Mounting evidence has revealed there may in fact be millions of victims, virtually all unaware they have been taken. What are the telltale signs of abduction? And why do aliens appear determined to keep their activities secret? From lost time and recovered memories to terrifying accounts of alien surgery, join us as we reveal the hidden signs of alien abduction on Unsealed Alien Files. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed. Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secrets on planet Earth. Melbourne, Australia, August 8th, 1993. Kelly Cahill and her family are driving at night outside the city when she spots something directly ahead. It's a saucer-shaped UFO hovering silently above the road. Cahill screams, alerting her husband to the looming threat. But at that same moment, the UFO speeds off into the night. The family continues on their drive home, keeping a lookout for the UFO. Suddenly, a blinding light appears before them. Cahill slams on the brakes in terror. But her fear is quickly replaced by a strange calm. Cahill feels her body relax as she settles into an almost dreamlike state. Seconds later, the light disappears, and Cahill regains her senses. She asks her husband what happened, but he too was affected, as were their children. No one in the car has any clear recollection of events that took place just moments earlier. Returning home, Cahill has a nagging feeling the journey has taken much longer than it should. Checking the time, she's shocked to discover the family is an hour overdue. It's a bizarre phenomenon ufologists call missing time. Now, missing time is, again, a key component to this abduction phenomenon. And it can happen when you're driving down the road. People have reported that they're driving around, they see something strange. Next thing they know, it's 20 minutes later. Or it's two hours later. Or in some cases, days later. In the days that follow, Cahill begins to have dim recollections of that missing hour. There, they were met by a contingent of humanoid aliens. Then she remembers being overcome by terror. The next moment, the family was back in the car. The UFO, nowhere to be seen. It might all be passed off as a terrible dream, were it not for the mysterious triangular mark Kelly Cahill discovered on her stomach following her ordeal. Was the Cahill family abducted by extraterrestrials? And did they experience missing time? For some abductees, missing time may amount to no more than a few minutes. But for others, the ordeal has been known to last much longer. Unsealed case file. The Chilean time warp. Pampa Juscuma, Chile, April 1977. Corporal Armando Valdez is part of a border patrol monitoring the nation's frontier with Argentina. Coming off duty, Valdez and the rest of the patrol take shelter for the night in a stable. But the men are shaken from their sleep in the early hours of the morning when two strange lights descend from the sky to land nearby. They set out to investigate. The patrol watches in astonishment as Valdez approaches one of the blazing objects, only to vanish into its blinding light. The UFOs then disappear without a trace. The patrol scours the area for their missing comrade. Fifteen minutes later, they hear a loud thump and are amazed to discover the missing corporal lying on the ground a short distance away. His fellow soldiers stare at him in disbelief as Valdez is suddenly sporting a week's growth of beard. Looking at his digital watch, Valdez is shocked to discover it displays a date five days after the time of his abduction. The encounter is one of the most compelling instances of missing time on record. Was Armando Valdez abducted by aliens? What happened to him during his absence? And is there a way to recover the missing time? Coming up 
we reveal the shocking details of abduction by probing the deepest recesses of the victim's subconscious mind. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Millions of people around the world may have been abducted by aliens, but have no recollection of the experience. Some victims become suddenly aware of a past abduction through a phenomenon ufologists call missing time. But recalling the details of alien captivity is a unique science that harkens back to the modern era's first reported abduction. Unsealed case file. Betty and Barney Hill. New Hampshire, September 19th, 1961. Betty and Barney Hill are driving home through the New England countryside when they suddenly find themselves pursued by a UFO. The mysterious craft lands directly in their path. The Hills watch in disbelief as a group of small humanoid creatures emerge from them. At that moment, the scene suddenly fades to black. The next thing the Hills remember, they are sitting quietly in their driveway. They have no idea how they got home how much time has passed, and what happened to them in the interim. The Hills go to the police, but they refuse to investigate the incident. It's a phenomenon all too familiar to an abductee. No one believes them. Many victims are even ostracized by friends and family. The experience leaves the couple deeply shaken. The Hills become obsessed with reconstructing the night's events, but years of effort bring few answers. In desperation, they look for help from a most unexpected source, a hypnotherapist. For some abductees to recall their experiences, they have to undergo what's called hypnotic regression. What that means is that they're put under a state of hypnosis to help them recall those memories that have seemingly been buried into the back of their mind. Probing their subconscious memories, the couple reveals they were in fact abducted by the aliens who approached their car. Inside their craft, the couple claims they were subjected to terrifying medical experiments. For ufologists, it's an historic moment. Cases of abduction didn't really start to service publicly or popularly until the late 1960s. The story of Betty and Barney Hill is the first of thousands of eerily similar abduction reports. But what is the purpose of these abductions and experiments? Are the aliens simply trying to gather knowledge about us? Or is it all part of a larger plan? It will take another 10 years for a possible answer to appear. Unsealed case file. The Eagle Lake abduction. Eagle Lake, Maine, August 20th, 1976. Brothers Jack and Jim Weiner, along with friends Chuck Rack and Charlie Foltz, are about to set out on a night fishing trip on the state's famous Allagash Wilderness Waterway. Before taking to the water, they build a fire to guide them back to camp. Out on the lake, the men see a glowing ball of light, some 80 feet across, hovering above the trees. It creeps slowly along the shore in the general direction of the fishermen. Curious, one of the men takes his flashlight and signals to the strange craft. The object responds immediately, changing course to intercept the canoe. Alarmed, the four men attempt to paddle to shore, but it's too late. The looming UFO is already on top of them and they are overcome by a blinding light from above. But in the blink of an eye, the men find themselves standing on the shore, unharmed. The UFO hovers nearby for a moment and then disappears into the night sky. The men notice that their campfire has died down to smoldering embers. Hours have passed, but they have no memory of what happened. Following the incident, Jack Weiner begins to suffer recurring nightmares. In them, he sees humanoid aliens performing a kind of medical procedure on his arm, while his friends watch helplessly. Soon after, the others begin to experience similar disturbing dreams. The men each undergo hypnosis. Together, they offer a chilling account of the night as it unfolded. The terrified men were taken aboard the UFO, where they were subjected to invasive medical procedures, including the painful extraction of skin and fluid samples. The sessions lead their hypnotherapist to a startling conclusion. He believes the men were being tagged the way humans tag animals before releasing them. What happened to the victims of Eagle Lake? Were they tagged by their alien captors? And is there any way to prove their story? Coming up, 
we reveal hard evidence of alien abduction discovered inside the bodies of victims. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Millions around the world may have been the victims of alien abduction. Some experts believe these abductions are a means of tagging selected victims. But if aliens are tagging us, what form do these tags take? And what is their purpose? Alamogordo, New Mexico, 1975. Sixteen-year-old Ted Davenport embarks on a solo camping trip into the wilderness of the American Southwest. Alone on the trail, he has an unsettling feeling that he's being watched. Later that night, Davenport steps out of his tent and is shocked to find himself confronted by beings from another world. He blacks out. The next morning, Davenport wakes up beside his burned-out campfire with a painful bump on his head and no memory of the night before. Five years later, Davenport is in the Navy. He is injured while on duty and is sent for emergency medical treatments. But an MRI reveals something incredible. It's a small metallic object lodged in his brain. And some experts believe its presence is no mere coincidence. Well, in the abduction phenomena, there is apparently a 10 to 15 percent of those who we believe are true abductees that might have been implanted. Now, we're talking about implants that are uh, visible on an x-ray or a CAT scan. Dr. Roger Lear is a surgeon who has spent decades studying suspected alien implants. The little rods, which uh, vary in length from about the six to eight millimeters in length, and they're about as big around as a pencil lead, they're all covered with some kind of a coating, a biological coating. Some victims discover strange triangular scars or report what are called scoop marks in their skin. But often, what might be considered a visible point of entry does not exist. Ted Davenport is just one of thousands discovered to have suspected alien technology in their bodies. But what is the purpose of these objects? The answer may be found in one of the most remarkable abductions on record. Unsealed case file. The Betty Andreasen incident. South Ashburnham, Massachusetts, January 25th, 1967. Betty Andreasen is enjoying an evening at home with her family when the house lights suddenly switch off and on again for no reason. Seconds later, an eerie pulsating glow appears outside the kitchen window. The light reveals a group of humanoid aliens converging on the house. The intruders pass effortlessly through the front door and immediately freeze the terrified family in a kind of suspended animation. The leader establishes a telepathic connection with Betty. Her fear is replaced by a strange calm. Betty is then taken aboard a small saucer-like craft, hovering not far from the house. There, she is subjected to a series of medical examinations and a bizarre test of her intellect that induces what she will later describe as a state that drifts between ecstasy and pain. Hours later, she is returned to the house. It's a traumatic experience, and it will take another decade for Betty to share her story. In 1977, she undergoes hypnotherapy, trying to uncover the details about what happened to her on board the alien craft. Her sessions reveal something incredible. Betty wasn't taken that night to be given an implant. Instead, she recalls the aliens removing a brain implant through her nose, an object that had been placed inside her head in the 1940s during a childhood abduction. It's a memory that remained dormant in her subconscious for decades. But what was the implant's purpose? And why did the aliens want it back? Roger Lear has a theory. I get asked many, many times, are they tracking devices? Are they behavior modification devices? On the basis of uh, what I've seen and the data that we have collected, I don't believe that's the case at all. I believe that these are data monitoring devices, and I believe that they use implants to gain information on the changes of our DNA. Are aliens placing implants in abduction victims to monitor our DNA? And if they are, what is their ultimate goal? Coming up 
we reveal the possible endgame of this campaign of abduction and its terrifying consequences for the human race. This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Evidence suggests aliens are abducting victims in a chilling campaign to monitor human biological processes by implanting and removing extraterrestrial devices. Some experts believe they may even be monitoring our DNA. But why? Aldergrove, British Columbia, July 17, 1991. Corina Sables and a friend spot a massive boomerang-shaped UFO in the night sky above her house. Moments later, she vanishes, reappearing nearly an hour later, with no idea that she was gone and unable to account for the missing time. She appears unharmed by the experience, but Corina Sables' story doesn't end there. In the time following her disappearance, she has a nagging feeling this isn't the first time she has disappeared, and that it won't be the last. But Sable soon learns she isn't the only alien target under her roof. Weeks later, she is shocked to see an alien Grey entering her daughter's bedroom. Racing to the young girl's aid, Sable finds nothing. But soon after, her daughter begins drawing pictures of an alien she calls the Doctor, who sometimes enters her room at night. The story unleashes a flood of repressed abduction memories in Sables, including needles piercing her abdomen and row after row of alien fetuses stored in liquid. Sables realizes that she has been part of an experiment to produce an alien-human hybrid. And that's not all. In a sudden flash of disturbing revelation, she realizes that stories her mother told her were also veiled accounts of abduction. Corina Sables believes her family may have been abducted across generations. Why would you need to take humans, put some type of physical implant in there, and do whatever genetic modification they're trying to do? My guess is they could potentially make a life form that they would like us to evolve into. Are extraterrestrials secretly creating a new race of alien-human hybrids down through generations? Are abductees doomed to a life of constant fear? Have you been abducted by aliens without any memory of the event? This is Unsealed Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.